the downtown east side's in the news all the time for the wrong reasons yep. and people forget that there's you know there's families living down there that are separate from the drug issue yep. so I went down there and met with uh, three three of the programmers at the three different uh, community centers and I said look I'd like to get a kids program going at the golf course and I'll pay for it and or I'll raise money for it and all you have to do is provide the right children the ones that are in real need each year and uh, we'll put on these golf camps in August. City Youth, the two weeks that we have those kids from the downtown east side here are the best two weeks of the year. Um, I'll start crying talking about them. They're so excited to be outside. There's not a lot of green space where they come from. Yeah. We feed them a hot meal every day. And sometimes that's the only hot meal that they have in a day or for the week. They talk about the food, um, the experience for them. It's great. We see some of the same kids year in and year out. I mean, I came from a pretty poor background as well, and I, when I first got on a golf course, I, have to, I used to have to sneak onto the golf course myself mm -hmm. at the Vancouver Golf Club, sneak on the 15th hole, and play the back nine, the circuit, never be seen by anybody, and that was my introduction to the game. And so I can just see that these kids don't have a golf course nearby to sneak onto, right? <laughs> so uh, it's, if you don't have the money, there's no way of getting on the golf course. Well, when I came here in 1998, I hired Mike Vanderwolf and he came here and the first thing he did was started to develop a junior program and what I noticed was everybody that was in the junior program was coming from this catchment area, yeah. which means they were fairly affluent or came from an affluent background. And so uh, the next year I decided, well, you know, there's an er element of the society that we're kind of missing out on, and that's the kids living in the downtown east side. We started off the first camp in 1999 was just a week long in August. And uh, from that point on, because it was so popular, it's been two weeks in August. And uh, with the way we pay for it is um, through do private donations, either through the men's and ladies clubs here, but mostly from individuals that I've met over the last 40 years in golf. Yep. Often very successful people who wanted to give something back to golf. Mm -hmm. And they knew that every nickel that they gave was going directly to the kids. There right. was no administration fees or anything. So right. they were happy to help out. So uh, yeah, that's kind of, kind of how it started and uh, it's been going that way ever since. From your perspective in working with Muncie, yeah, over the last 20 so years, uh, the program that he started, um, do you have a rough sense of how many people that's impacted? Let's see, we'll, we'll do the math. We're looking at easily 1,500 people a year um, for 20 years. We can do the math there and, and find out a lot of people. Whether it be kids that are given every opportunity to experience things, now they've got to actually take ownership for them. It gives an opportunity to. If we look at the inner city youth program, where it might be kids on the other side of things who don't have much opportunity, but are getting, you know, a lot of interesting life experience, then this gives them a little, little form and structure and a little, little sense that hey, there's some, there's some, you know, there's a pathway in this world.
this year we're probably going to set some records. I know in May alone, all three of our championship courses did over 10,000 rounds, which is, um, that's a lot of golf. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the golf course superintendents have done a remarkable job the last year and a half. The courses have had so much play, so much wear and tear. Uh, and you'll see today they're in fantastic conditions. We've got a lot of great junior programs here at McCleary and at Fraserview. Um, we want to continue to grow the game. We have a lot of women's programs that we're involved with. The Golf and Tacos group just aligned with McCleary here. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good things going on. How has that changed your, or I guess brought you back into golf even yeah, more? So yeah, so it's funny. I moved out to Vancouver last year and like didn't really know anyone. And there was no golf programs in Vancouver. Like I desperately, desperately tried. And unless I was like over 50 or like very good, yeah. there was nothing. And so I knew girls in Calgary that were involved in golf and tacos and got in touch with Kate. And when she said they were bringing it to Vancouver, I jumped on board and now I have like so many girls to golf with. And it's such a community. Like it is intimidating for women, I think, to go on the course. Like you do feel a little like judged and like you duff it and you feel like, oh my God. Which is silly because yes. guys do it all the time. I know. Like I've lost eight balls today. <laughs> like, like literally I've yeah. been playing forever, yeah. Uh, golf here is extremely strong and it comes from um, a very diverse grouping of, of individuals. Um, you know, na name, a, name a subset and, and they are represented here in terms of uh, their participation. Beginners programs are, are amazing, um, how many people are coming in, both kids, adults, women, um, uh, folks trying to just improve themselves, get to the next level. Um, you know, this, this part of the community, um, you know, it's an amazing thing to have. I mean, there's five golf courses around us. Yeah. And uh, this, is the, this is, you know, a public golf course owned by the city of Vancouver, of course. And uh, it is well used and, and it's open to everybody. So. Static Jiwa, he does a lot of work for the uh, MJT Tour now, but he's on his way to uh, hopefully a life of, 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 of touring. Yeah, uh, very very good golfer, one of the top golfers in the area here. You're you're the man that just shot 62, I hear. Uh, out of Fraser a couple of weeks ago, yeah. That's pretty wow. amazing, man. Yeah, thank you. You must oh. be you're in the zone right now. We're getting there. We're gearing up for uh, my pro debut on the McKenzie Tour and. Uh, Mike and I have been working pretty hard over the last few years to get my game to that level and we're going to keep riding the road up. So mom, you know, got me introduced to all the mini golf and kind of the more fun stuff when I was young, but it was my dad who brought me here, introduced me to Mike, and that's where things kind of kicked off from there. Cool. And so you've played here for how many years? Oh man, uh, I think I started working with you when I was 11. I think earlier. Maybe earlier than that. And then um, I guess it's been competitively, I've played for 11 years now. Okay. And I guess overall it's been about maybe 15 or 16. With me, it's been the, the attitude toward the game that Mike has instilled in me. Like when I was watching him and when he was teaching me when I was younger, he instilled this foundation of a work ethic, of an attitude towards the game that you need to be successful, yeah. putting in your all and enjoying the process. Yeah. And uh, I'd say that's something that I admire most about Mike and what he's taught me and what I'm using to ride all the way up. Everyone goes with like the same vibe and mentality and like you're there to have fun and yeah. get around. So it's made it a lot more inviting to get out on the course and now I have like tons of people to play with. Yeah. So it's like a really cool community. We do have a tea time soon. Before we, before we get off on the golf course, uh, let's talk a little bit about McCleary. McCleary is very narrow. Um, first hole here, I've, I never hit the fairway, <laughs> ever. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, I just think it's just a so very narrow, <laughs> it's, it's a tough driving course.
So it's a complicated problem to solve, right? Yeah. So there's the, the fundraising element, which I'm sure varies from year to year, whether it's from the, the club here or from some of the private donors that you've met over the years. Uh, there's the marketing of this from a recruitment standpoint. How do you educate families in the downtown east side that this program exists and that it would be good for their kids to participate? And then there's the operational element of when they're here for those weeks in August, uh, how does this plan get executed? So well, a, a lot of that has to do with Mike because yep. he's so experienced at running golf camps for kids. Mm -hmm. He runs the, once they're on the site, he takes over. Yep. And so we have five instructors, and by the way, they're all really good instructors. Yep. Phil Jonas, um, Sandra Comedina, um, uh, we used to have James Harper, uh, Jeff Booter, these are all accomplished players. And so they, they know how to treat children and they know how to get the most out of them. How do you educate families that this is a program um, that their, their kids should be participating in? The programmers at each individual community centers, they have a waiting list for kids to get on it. Yeah. Uh, so we have to restrict the numbers because we can only accommodate so many people here at one time. Yeah. There's no problem in them filling it every year. Right. So for them to qualify, they ha their family has to be involved in the leisure access card, which means they come from a low income family. That's number one. And number two, they, would, they know the children. So good. So good, buddy. We've talked a lot about the vibe of a golf course this season. The sense of place from an architecture perspective, compression and release, strategy, precision. The vibe at McCleary is open and inviting. This has less to do with the course itself. It's more related to the sum of its parts. Its driving range, its community center feel to the clubhouse, its leagues and programming, its price point, and the big heart of the 2020 CPGA Warren Crosby Award winner, Munsey Booth, who's introduced golf to thousands of underprivileged kids. At this point, all I'm trying to figure out is how to stop getting my ass kicked by a former Willington Cup player. This doesn't look like the easiest shot, though. 183, tuck pin, back right. Let's see what you got. Left French. 140 back there. It's tempting. <laughs> well, we need some birdies. Inspired by Munt. By Munty's smooth, smooth action. So safe. So safe. safe Couldn't be more center of that green. Once he's about to tee off, how are you feeling? I think he's beating me. He's hitting it really solidly. Um, overall, can't find the fairway, but making a lot of scrambling pars. You're grinding. Yeah, I'm grinding. Um, the opposite of what you're doing. Right I'm now. hitting greens, but I'm missing everything. Missing everything. But you got some to the hole. I know. We, we've got a trend. I need to step on your throat. <laughs> like, I need to. This is this is our Saturday. This is the second last counting round. I know, and I think I only have two more stroking holes. Actually, one more. 
and in the back. Muncie crushes I know, another I know there's some birdies out there. I just gotta find them. Yeah. I just gotta find them. 211. Gotta go through that V. back nine here it really challenges you it's a uh, shot makers back nine there's good variety there's some elevation change um, there's some short holes uh, some long holes I, it's 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 a great challenge this back nine here I think you guys will enjoy it today yeah. right. you can't just have private clubs you can't For sure. you have to have the mom and pops all the way up I think that's what we're trying to like there's a lot of golf courses that people wouldn't pay much attention to that have lots of great qualities you know they have good holes they have good characteristics that are worth celebrating so it's I mean I, I feel like we, we feel like we have a responsibility to try and highlight those and, and share that stuff yeah, with people. Great what you're doing. yeah good ball Sean Number 11 is the par 5. It's a great driving hole for the longer hitters because the water's in play in the trees on the right. Yeah. Very reachable for longer hitters, but you hit to a very interesting green, three levels, and you can tuck the pin in the very back, okay. and it's a very small target. Okay. That's so good, Muncie. Happy. Too much. You f kidding me? <laughs> what? Thirteenth hole from the back tee. Unbelievable. I think that's one of the best par threes in the lower mainland, okay. but you got to go up to the top. You saw that one up by the, the is it a railroad track or is it just a pathway? It's a, that, it's a lane. It's a lane. Yeah. 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 So what is, is that 220, that hole back there? Well, about that, yep. With the hazard on the right? Yep. So A very small green. Yeah, a small hard green and you tuck it in the back right. It's a brutal golf course, nice. or a brutal hole rather. So that's the best par three on the course in your opinion? By far. Going over the hazard or not? Yeah, it's over the part of the hazard. <laughs> like, what was the logic? <laughs>
<laughs> well done. Just found out Lucas Glover won the TPC John Deere. <laughs> Al just got finished saying, I feel zero ties to Lucas Glover. <laughs> zero emotional ties, but I appreciate his grind. I feel like a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> he, he won a Beth Page, right? US Open? Yeah. He's US Open. And he's got he, he goes low. He's he, got He flirts game. with 59 like at least twice a year. He's a great putter too. Uh, so yeah, we, we've all been struggling. We just found out the laggies are not doing so hot either. Al just made a birdie on 16, though that could prove to be huge. Yeah, just to keep me in it for tomorrow. I don't want some magic to happen at Capilano. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice. And just delicate top. <laughs> you see that? Those are the smiles that come from golf. Kate smiles why she started Golf and Tacos. Kate's smile transcends age, gender, race, and ability. Kate's smile is why Golf Canada launched the inaugural All Abilities Championship this year. In our eyes, a golf course's impact starts from the perspective of its surrounding population density and its price point access. Stanley Park, Humber Valley, McCleary, Dentonia Park, these are all essential places in golf. We're not in politics, but we do read. For policymakers opposed to municipal golf, why aren't you measuring what's behind Kate's smile? This joy combined with golf's sense of community is behind the 5.7 million Canadians who picked up a club last year. Please start measuring these smiles.
This is a fun day. This is a really yeah. fun day. I feel pretty thankful that like this is kind of my main golf course. It's hard to get out here and actually play golf because it's so busy. I didn't do it. You didn't. I made eagle and then I made a sweet birdie. Otherwise, I said otherwise, to Alex otherwise, after I was one under through eight, yeah, I had no bogeys. Okay. I was like, I'm gonna. Step is, that, that, is that on the main floor? Like, like before you were batting the cart, and you can step on here. <laughs> well, that's the difference. <laughs> okay. You were playing golf today. I was playing slap the ball around and try not to hit the hospital. But you made an eight point. You made an eagle. Fluke eagle there. It was Luke yeah, birdie yeah. on the other one. Today I played a terrible. That's true. Could have won it. Done it. Well, I just felt bad for these kids that live down there that, uh, you know, they don't have an opportunity to get onto a golf course or they've never been to a course and they're missing out on so much. Uh, they're living in a concrete jungle, really. There's no green space other than Oppenheimer Park. Yeah. Who wants to go there? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, these kids should be given an opportunity anyways. There's Fred Clark from Mission who I met when I was at the Mission Golf Course. He started off by donating $5,000 every year. He just said, here, months, take the money, do what you want. And uh, we've got several people that do that every year. Muncie Booth is a visionary. Decades ago, he intuitively saw all that golf could do for an individual. He was aware of his privilege of being a golfer, yet he also saw access barriers and he did something about it. Thank you, Muncie, for all that you've done and that you continue to do.